In the vast expanse of 20th century history, one name stands out in stark contrast, Joseph Stalin. Rising from humble beginnings in Georgia to become the architect of Soviet power, Stalin's rule was a paradox of visionary ambition and ruthless terror. Through the lens of his complex legacy, we delve into the man who transformed a nation and left an indelible imprint on the world. Join us as we explore the life, the power, and the enigma of Joseph Stalin. We'll see you after the intro. Early Life and Background Joseph Stalin was born as Iasev Basirionis Diz Jagashvili on December 18, 1878, in the small town of Gori, in the Tiflis Governorate of the Russian Empire, now Georgia. His father, Basirian Jagashvili, was a cobbler, and his mother, Kedavan Jalads, was a devout Christian who worked as a laundress. Stalin's early life was marked by poverty, and his father was an abusive alcoholic who often beat him and his mother. The domestic violence and hardship had a profound impact on Stalin's personality and worldview. Stalin's mother, determined to provide him with a better future, enrolled him in the Gori Church School in 1888. Stalin excelled academically, particularly in religious studies, and earned a scholarship to attend the Tiflis Theological Seminary in 1894. It was during his time at the seminary that Stalin was introduced to the works of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, which fueled his interest in revolutionary politics. He joined a secret Marxist group and began reading illicit literature, which eventually led to his expulsion from the seminary in 1899 for his revolutionary activities. Rise in the Bolshevik Party After leaving the seminary, Stalin immersed himself in the revolutionary movement. He adopted the pseudonym Koba, inspired by a Georgian folk hero, and began organizing strikes and protests among workers. Stalin joined the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, RSDLP, in 1901 and aligned himself with the Bolshevik faction led by Vladimir Lenin when the party split in 1903. Stalin's early revolutionary work involved writing articles for Marxist newspapers, distributing pamphlets, and organizing workers' strikes. He was arrested multiple times by the Tsarist authorities and exiled to Siberia on several occasions. Despite these setbacks, Stalin proved to be a dedicated and effective organizer, gaining a reputation for his tenacity and ruthlessness. In 1912, Lenin appointed Stalin to the Central Committee of the Bolshevik Party. Stalin's skills as an administrator and his ability to navigate the party's internal politics made him an invaluable asset to Lenin. During the years leading up to the Russian Revolution, Stalin continued his underground activities, working to build the party's infrastructure and expand its influence. The October Revolution and Civil War the February Revolution of 1917 led to the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II and the establishment of a provisional government in Russia. The provisional government, however, struggled to maintain control and address the pressing issues facing the country, such as widespread unrest, economic hardship, and continued involvement in World War I. In October 1917, the Bolsheviks, under Lenin's leadership, seized power in the October Revolution. Stalin played a significant role in the planning and execution of the revolution, leveraging his organizational skills and his position within the party. Following the revolution, Stalin was appointed People's Commissar for Nationalities Affairs, a role in which he worked to secure the allegiance of various ethnic groups within the newly formed Soviet state. The Russian Civil War, 1917-1922, ensued as the Bolsheviks, Red Army, fought against the White Army, composed of various anti-Bolshevik forces. Stalin was involved in several key military campaigns during the Civil War, 
including the defense of Tsaritsyn, later renamed Stalingrad in his honor. His actions during the Civil War demonstrated his strategic acumen and his willingness to use brutal measures to achieve victory. The Red Army ultimately triumphed, solidifying Bolshevik control over Russia. Consolidation of Power After Lenin's death in 1924, a power struggle ensued within the Communist Party. Stalin, who had been appointed General Secretary of the Communist Party in 1922, used his position to build a base of support and gradually outmaneuver his rivals. By the late 1920s, Stalin had emerged as the undisputed leader of the Soviet Union. Stalin's consolidation of power involved a series of purges, known as the Great Purge or the Great Terror, 1936 to 1938. He eliminated perceived threats within the party, the military, and society at large through a combination of arrests, show trials, executions, and forced labor camps. Prominent figures such as Leon Trotsky, Grigory Zinoviev, and Lev Kamenev were among the many victims of Stalin's purges. Stalin's methods of consolidating power extended beyond political repression. He also established a cult of personality, portraying himself as the father of the nation and the rightful heir to Lenin. Propaganda, censorship, and a network of informants helped to maintain his image and suppress dissent. The state-controlled media glorified Stalin's achievements and painted him as an infallible leader, while any criticism or opposition was swiftly and brutally crushed. Industrialization and Collectivization Stalin's vision for the Soviet Union involved rapid industrialization and the collectivization of agriculture. He launched a series of five-year plans aimed at transforming the Soviet economy from an agrarian one to an industrial powerhouse. These plans focused on the development of heavy industry, infrastructure, and military capabilities. The first five-year plan, initiated in 1928, set ambitious targets for the production of steel, coal, and machinery. While the plan resulted in significant industrial growth, it also led to widespread inefficiencies, corruption, and worker exploitation. Nevertheless, Stalin's policies succeeded in creating a substantial industrial base that would later prove crucial during World War II. Collectivization, which also began in 1928, aimed to consolidate individual peasant farms into large, state-controlled collective farms, Caucasus, and state farms, soft causes. The policy met with widespread resistance, leading to brutal crackdowns and a devastating famine, particularly in Ukraine, the Holodomor, which resulted in millions of deaths. Peasants who resisted collectivization were labeled kulaks, wealthy farmers, and were often deported, imprisoned, or executed. Despite the human cost, Stalin's policies did achieve significant industrial growth, making the Soviet Union one of the world's leading industrial nations by the late 1930s. The rapid industrialization also enabled the Soviet Union to build a formidable military force, which would play a crucial role in the coming conflict with Nazi Germany. World War II and the Great Patriotic War The non-aggression pact Stalin signed with Nazi Germany in 1939, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, initially kept the Soviet Union out of World War II. However, this pact was shattered on June 22, 1941, when Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, invading the Soviet Union. Stalin was initially caught off guard by the invasion, leading to severe early losses for the Red Army. Stalin quickly assumed direct control over the Soviet war effort, implementing a policy of scorched earth to deny resources to the advancing Germans. 
He also relocated much of the Soviet industrial base to the east, away from the front lines, ensuring that production could continue. Stalin's leadership during the Great Patriotic War, as it is known in Russia, was characterized by a combination of strategic acumen, brutal discipline, and rallying the Soviet population for a total war effort. Key battles such as the Siege of Leningrad, the Battle of Stalingrad, and the Battle of Kursk turned the tide in favor of the Allies. The Red Army's fierce resistance and eventual counteroffensive pushed the Germans back, culminating in the capture of Berlin in May 1945. Stalin's role in the defeat of Nazi Germany cemented his status as a war hero in the Soviet Union and elevated the Soviet Union standing on the global stage. Post-War Soviet Union and the Cold War After World War II, Stalin focused on rebuilding the Soviet Union and establishing a sphere of influence in Eastern Europe. He installed communist governments in countries such as Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and East Germany, creating a buffer zone against potential future invasions. This expansion of Soviet influence marked the beginning of the Cold War, a period of geopolitical tension between the Soviet Union and the United States. Stalin's post-war policies continued to emphasize heavy industry and military strength. The Soviet Union successfully developed nuclear weapons, achieving its first successful test in 1949. Domestically, Stalin's regime maintained tight control over society, with continued purges and political repression. The Cold War saw the Soviet Union and the United States engaged in a global struggle for influence, with both sides supporting proxy wars, engaging in espionage, and competing in technological advancements, such as the space race. Stalin's foreign policy was marked by a deep distrust of the West and an emphasis on maintaining a strong military presence in Eastern Europe. Death and Legacy Joseph Stalin died on March 5, 1953, after suffering a stroke. His death marked the end of an era in Soviet history. Stalin's legacy is complex and highly controversial. He transformed the Soviet Union into a global superpower, but his rule was also marked by widespread terror, repression, and the deaths of millions of people. In the years following Stalin's death, his successor, Nikita Khrushchev, denounced Stalin's excesses in the secret speech of 1956 and initiated a period of de-Stalinization. Khrushchev's policies aimed to dismantle the cult of personality surrounding Stalin, reduce the use of terror, and introduce limited reforms. Despite these efforts, Stalin remains a polarizing figure, with some viewing him. In closing, I want to thank you for listening and following up. Take care, and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode.